Welcome back to Naval Action, episode 41 of A Letter to the King. And Happy New Year, 2017's here. Maybe the year that Naval Action goes live. And let's hope we start the year with some folks coming back. Lots have changed in Naval Action over the last two or three months. I think actually it's really improved. There's been a few comfort of life changes. We've been able to tow your ships around, faster open world travel and um, the ability and, and the end of battle screen camping so let's hope that we start seeing some numbers improve in naval action in the alpha and um, with the future releases to come with raids and the ui improvements and whatever else they've got up their sleeves um, i think naval action is actually a better game now than it's probably been um, all last year for those of you who are new to A Letter to the King, this is my attempt to keep people up to date with what's happening in the PvP world on Euro PvP 1. <clears throat> and if we remind ourselves where we were last week, the Danes had gone lollipodling around grabbing up a whole bunch of um, Spanish land uh, in the previous week. And the Americans had managed a, what was effectively a night cap on A's which was the last of the Tower Circle port battles. And we were into the new port battles proper. Uh, during last week, there were none taken. So what happened this week? So first of all, in more Alliance freaking mechanics bullshit pants, the Swedes have fallen out of the Alliance with the Spanish and the cloggies have fallen out of the alliance with the british now this is just a failing of the mechanic when they reset it they should have done a day shift so that you vote before you fall out rather than you vote on the day um which at the moment just guarantees that every three weeks one of you falls out of your love cuddles that would be fine but it opens up the door to silliness where you can essentially go and capture your friends ports for strategic benefits etc um, and the fact that you can aggro up against a nation you're not at war with or you're not at a declared war with is just stupid but anyway that's where we are so there was a few weirdo ones with the pirates and the spanish this week so the pirates had a little go at los lenos now i don't know if this is a deliberate port battle or if it's a sidekick from the pvp stuff um, I've got no intel on this to say if it happened or not, if it's just... It, it, an interesting thing at the moment is it's actually relatively easy to generate hostility. If you, say, have two groups of ten and you do first-rate missions, you will flip a port in about 80 or 90 minutes. So large groups of PVEers can easily flip a port for hostility. Um, I don't know what happened at this one, but it was defended by the Spanish. Um, the French did their every three days they attacked Castries because uh, they're really annoyed that the British have taken a port next to their capital as well they should be um, this had an excellent turnout of screeners it was in the gap between Christmas and New Year there were so many um, Dutch who came along to assist and a fair whack of Americans too and the French never really bust the screen uh, I know they've set it up again for this week, so there'll be more first-rate action there. I know the French lost a lot of first-rates trying to get into that port. I think they got five or six ships in, but they just did the right thing when they realised it was all cock-a-doodle. Turned around and ran away, um, which they should have done, by the way. That's uh, not a piss-take or anything. Um, what else happened this week? Uh, there was another... Um, battle around uh, Santiago. Now this is just north of the deep water PVP zone. So again, I don't know if the Spanish set up a battle with the pirates here or if it was revenge um, for Los Lanas, but um, the Spanish um, didn't manage to take that port. There's, there's nothing in the forums to tell me about this and I've not caught any of my uh, Spanish mates to know what went on here. Um, the Swedes managed to cap, it's not turned blue on here, it's flashing, I must have grabbed it while this, the thing was on the wrong flash, but the Swedes managed to um, 
snaffle this little set down here from the Spanish when they fell out of uh, Kumana it is. Uh, so this is one of these bullshit ones where you can basically take unopposed your allies port because for a week you've fallen out of the alliance and neutral is the same as war so you can generate hostility. None of your opponents can do anything about it because they're also opposed to the same thing. So other than capturing the fleet on the way there, which is very difficult to do because they only need to get three ships in, it's almost impossible to stop this sort of malarkey. And in my opinion, it really needs fixing devs. Not that any of you listen to this, but if you did, bloody fix it. If you're not at war, you should be neutral and incapable of uh, building stuff in those ports or teleporting in or out or anything like that. For all intents and purposes, you're, you're in a neutral state with them. Um... Probably the biggest battle of the week that took place that was fully contested, 25 on 25 made it in. Actually, there was a couple of those, but uh, the most outstanding was the Americans versus the Spanish. Now, again, this was sort of far to clock for the Spanish, uh, but they did manage to get 25 in there. It was a bit of a mixture um, of the Spanish alliance. And this is down in, um, I don't know, I can never, Islamadora or something, Islamabad. This was in Islamabad, and uh, this was there's a video up of this on the forums in good PvP battles posts in the national forum. Well worth watching. Um, basically, this was a real tug of war where both parties had one uh, capture zone taken, and the Americans sort of took the middle capture zone, if you like, and a brawl ensued. Now, the Spanish, to some extent, made the same mistake the Brits had made down in Trinidad the previous week. They got caught downwind of the circle and probably focused too much on trying to get back into the circle. And in doing so, they lost the brawl. And this is... Um, the new port battles are really good, actually, compared to the old port battles. There's, there's lots of tweaking to be done with them, I suspect. Uh, you do seem to be able to win them quite quickly if your opponent has bad wind or whatever, but that might be okay as well. They're far more dynamic um, because it is sort of chase the P, you know, you, there's three cups and you've got to hold two of them. If you hold two of them, you're winning about 40 minutes without ships or forts being sunk. Um, so it forces the hand of your opponent to repost, and either they have to chase down the poorly defended one, which, if your opponent's done the smart thing, is upwind for them, so it's a hard, hard yakker. Um, or they have to come and brawl in the well-defended one. And the Americans, this is fourth rate. The Americans did really well. They, they, they probably got a four ships to two ships advantage in kills, and then they just started working on the Spanish. Um, and they had that nice balance in their fleet. They certainly had three or four captains heavily set up for boarding. Um, and this meant as the Spanish were trying to turn back into the circle, the Americans uh, pounced on them and basically nabbed up their ships, which is brilliant because then, of course, you can leave a captured ship in the circle. I'm going to assume it counts towards the number of ships you have in the circle. Um, but that was actually the first win, uh, the first genuine win in the new port battle system. And the Spanish have lost Islamabad. Now, I know they've actually set that up for a return fight. And, of course, they've set it up as they should in their own time zone. So the Americans might need the help of their allies to defend Islamabad. And it's quite a long way from the front, lands, uh, front lines. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, yeah, but well done um, to the Americans there. And a great battle. Like I say, there's a really good video of it up in the national um, forum under good PvP battles, I think it's called, or something like that. Um, strangeness over here, uh, north of the Yucatan, um, I, I, I think this is, uh, I'm not going to call them rogue, uh, or, or did I just call them rogue, but th this is a, a British clan who seem to either be doing a lot of fleeting around here, or leveling around here, and they basically set up a couple of ports, uh, Texas, um, and another one around this neck of the woods, whatever this, this little stretch is called here, um, but I don't believe they were contested um, Texas is a hoot because it's got the worst port entrance in the world. That is screening heaven. You take that, you, you deserve all the prizes you get. Um, and the British, in the same way as the French, go for Castries every 10 minutes. Uh, the British had to never go at Trinidad, uh, to the south of the Windward Islands. And um, this was, uh, it was New Year's 
day for me. New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve for me, I think. Um, and as every good gamer, you know, should be, we do um, about five minutes of drinking and, and, and 23 hours and 55 minutes of gaming on New Year's Eve. And um, we, not really, I went to the casino and got slaughtered. It was fantastic. But, you know, that's um, how you're meant to bring in the new year. But the battle was an odd one. So the, the British were a bit lighter on screeners than normal. And the, um, the Dutch did as well as best as they could. But the Danes turned up with a really thumpy, bumpy fleet. I think it was 14 first rates or 12 first rates. And it stopped the Brits getting into the port where they wanted to. Um, and it meant the Brits entered between two circles with fundamentally the wind in their faces. Um, uh, there was actually a really good plan for, for the assault. Um, as we entered, the uh, open world wind is, is meant to be reflected in the port. We reckon it ticked by five degrees. Now, it might not have. Uh, it could have been lost in the fervour of trying to get in at the right spot, which we didn't manage to do. Um, two or three of our ships got caught. They got tagged literally within a, a second of them entering. Uh, just really bad luck. And they would have grabbed up one of the circles for us. They were upwind of, of one of the circles. Uh, and so basically our, the, the British plan fell to pieces. Um, and the French realised the Brits were in trouble. They managed to get all three circles. And the battle was over before you could shake a stick. It was only up for I think it was 31 minutes. Um, from start to finish, not a ship was lost on the inside the port battle proper. Um, there will have been a few frigates lost on the outside, screening against the big Danish fleet. But the French easily defended this. Uh, the British plan literally fell to pieces as they entered the port battle. Now, should you be able to lose like that? I personally think absolutely yes. I think the wind is now the most important thing as you enter a port and we're in sailing ships and I can't imagine why the wind shouldn't be the most important thing in a port battle. Um, as the attacker you do get the benefit of choosing where you enter from um, unless screeners harry you off. So screening has now really come up with a, it's a, there's a second level of importance. It's not only denying entry to the opponents, but it's also denying entry where they want to enter. If you can shut down the, uh, effectively the upwind part of the circle and force them to enter in the wrong place, um, you might not stop them getting in, but you will met, probably will stop them winning the port battle. Um, but the new port battle mechanics, I think, are, they're, they're really good. They, they, they perhaps need tweaking. Um, and, and, and the devs may be a trap a bit. To, to, to make it more fun, I think the port battles have to run longer. I think we have to be prepared for, say, a two-hour or even two-and-a-half-hour timer on the port battles. Now, from a computer game development perspective, they might be really nervous about making people commit to two hours because we do, you know, it is the ADD generation... Um, although most people who play this game do tend to be, I feel, um, up for a longer biff. Um, but they might be really nervous about launching a game to market where the primary raid takes sort of two hours uh, guaranteed. You're up there with competing with top end raids for World of Warcraft and the likes and even they've been tweaked down a bit. So well done Frenchies, you bastards and Happy New Year to you. Um... And I think that was more or less it. Uh, there was a, a port battle um, just around uh, George's town. There's so many bloody ports with George in their name. Uh, and this, but this was just near the Georgetown, just near the uh, shallow water Biffo zone. Uh, this was stimulated by our pirate brethren. Um, and I think this was perhaps just an accident. They did well in the PvP zone, and in doing so, killed enough BR. To flip the port so nothing happened there um, and lastly the Dutch had a go at Pampatar against the Danes as they seem to want to do uh, frequently uh, however it really didn't work out well for the Dutch this was at 5 a.m. for me so I couldn't get up to help with the screen but the Dutch only got half a dozen ships in and um, the Danes defended that well where will we see the Biffo well the good news is that port battles are really easy to stimulate now um, two hours tops, um, 90 minutes if you go in with two big groups of 12 and do first rate fleet missions. 
So we know the Frenchies are coming again for Castries. Um, we know the Brits, I haven't marked it actually here because it literally happened as I was setting this up, have turned over Santiago. Um, the Spanish are going back in down the south here off the Keys um, at Islamabad. Um, the random British clan have peeled off another port battle here, which is actually at the same time as these ones. So, hmm, interestingness. Um, so there's already four or five lined up. So um, I'm really hoping we start to get numbers back. Uh, the other thing that happened this week was that the, the devs, as a happy new year present, um, gave us the Wappen van Hamburg, or Waffles and Hamburger, as its preferred name. Um, I've had a few sales in the waffles, and it's a strange old ship. Um, I'll save most of this for my ship report, but it looks like a 1970s um, British building experiment where they've gone with the circular windows on the top of the building and the square windows at the bottom. Uh, they've all turned into drug dens now. Anything built in the 70s that won a building award is now a drug den. Um, it sails really high in the water, Um its top deck cannons seem to fire too high even its uh, second deck cannons seem to fire too high it turns really really well apart from through the wind uh, it's got top fourth rate armor um, and a decent health pool it's it's pretty close to the aggie uh, i'm not quite sure of its gun payload it's got a lot of guns it's got more decks than the aggie but they're a bit weird because half of them are at the back and then you've got the normal spread so it's it's a bit of a wonky one to fire with for me she looks a little bit cartoonish now that might just be because it's an earlier ship it's a 1720s model i think so it's kind of got that galleon shape you know it looks a bit like a dutch clog um but it's a free ship and you can run around and have a play with it i was doing some small battles earlier on this morning in it and um she's an interesting wee ship to sail but if you're one of the folks who stopped playing for a while and you're wondering, is it worth coming back to? At the moment, I'd say absolutely yes. The um, PvP events are good fun. Uh, they run four times a day at the moment and they're giving ships away left, right and centre through that. So um, you can easily get yourself an Ocean or a um, Agamem Nom 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 or Heavy Rattler or if you're really lucky, a Blueprint to go with it. Um... Numbers are a little bit skinny at the moment. Obviously, we're in the holiday break, but for me in gaming world, I'd expect there to be more rather than less. Uh, but I think the game, there's, like I say, there's lots of little comfort improvements they've made. We've been able to move your ships around. They've made the crafting uh, not as easy as it was six months ago, but easier than it was in the 9.6 patch or whatever that one was. Um, open world travels a little bit faster um, port battle aggravation generations better they've got rid of the exploits that were really wrecking it for some with the camping the port battle cutlasses um, you can't enter a port now if you've logged in you can't enter a port battle if you've logged in without nipping into a friendly port first for a, a reasonable amount of time um, you can't hide in battle screen now you've got a five minute timer where you either have to go to a friendly port or exit back into open world we've got the pvp events um and still lots of money to be made with all the different trading missions um so the game's really i think she's coming into shape I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to finding out what raids are i think they could add a nice new dynamic um and perhaps be a bit of an answer to some of the off-peak times um you know i know that a lot of my time zone the oceanic they've just stopped playing because it was too hard to generate hostility well it's not now boys come back in aussies uh, we, we've, if we could get a dozen ships, we could easily set up a few port battles. And with the new system, um, who knows, we could get ourselves into all sorts of trouble and strife. So come on back, Oceana. Um, the same goes for the, the rest of the TZs. Get back on, boys. Um, not much on the Splinters, Sails and Blood board. The Americans sneak up another place with the ports they took at Islamabad. And the Spanish now, I think they've probably lost half the ports they had since reset. Um, although we did see this week them agitating a few. Anyway, that's enough for this week's naval action. Give us a like, give us a subscribe. I will see you on the oceans and I will catch you.